Well, good day, everyone. This is Dr. Rivers here on the Golden Rule Show. He who has the gold rules. <laughs> God owns the gold, so we rule. I have with me today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, you, don't, you have no idea what you're in for. We have Augie, tongue-talking David, wet water walker, miracle producer, <laughs> Augustine David with us right now on our show. Augie, good to have you on the Golden Rule Show. Thank you, Dr. Rivers. It's just a joy to see you and to be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been with this man. I've watched this man blind. I I've watched ears open. I've watched miracles take place in this man's ministry. I'm telling you, this man is no joke. Uh, everyone, set back because the original equipment, Augustine David, <laughs> from God's throne, is here today to bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Augie David, let's talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because, because Dr. Dr. Augie David, I actually heard about him in a, in a conference. Uh, I was there in 1990s with Dave Roberson. He, he was telling a story about a man named, named Augie David. I go, who is this Augie David? So 15 years later, I'm in a meeting in Miami, and, and this guy Augie David comes in. And I'm going, where do I know this, this actual name from? And, 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 and I was introduced, and he mentioned Dave Mayor Roberson, and Augie David is here today. Augie, what is the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Doc. I'll be happy to share that. Many years ago, I was, uh, as a new believer in Christ, I went to a healing, uh, a charismatic kind of meeting in India. I was raised in a Methodist church background, and I just accepted Jesus. But this was a lot of noise of people saying, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and all those kinds of things. And I was just a new believer in Christ, and I don't know why I went forward. Uh, so the, the prayer warrior there, you know, he recognized I was already saved. He said, what you need is you need to speak in tongues. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I said, sir, I don't know what that's all about. I'm not ready for it. But unfortunately, this prayer warrior was very immature, totally unscriptural, very offensive. And as a new believer, it hurt me badly when he said, you must speak in tongues, otherwise you'll go to hell. Now, that's not scriptural at all. And uh, I was very angry. And right there in the prayer line, I looked at him, Doc, and I said, you go to hell. <laughs> 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 that experience hardened my heart. And I began to read books, talk to pastors that hated tongues worse than the devil. And I became very convinced that the age of miracles had passed away, tongues have ceased, and all those kinds of things. And I didn't wait for the charismaniacs to come to me. I went to them to straighten my thinking out about speaking tongues and so on. But God opened the eyes of my understanding. And uh, eventually I found some answers and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I realized how important that is for service. And uh, I'm sharing this thing, Doc, uh, because there's a lot of people that may have had bad experience. They're using that as an excuse uh, because they're offended. Uh, I'm, I'm here to just say that we've got to remove that. And uh, I was in seminary in Oregon many years ago. They were very anti-charismatic, anti-tongues and all that. So they asked me to come on a debate. So we had a big class and four professors there. And the other guy was against tongues. And, of course, the whole seminary was. And he said uh, they, they presented a paper why they were against tongues. I presented why we were, you know, uh, five instances in the book of Acts. Each of those instances, it was a normal experience to receive tongues. And uh, there was questions and answers. There's one guy that stood up with great authority, and he said, what about the place in the Bible where it says, tongues shall cease? I said, where does it say that? He opened up his Bible to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. He said, whether there be prophecies, it shall vanish away. Whether there be tongues, it shall cease. I said, sir, can you please read the next phrase of the same verse? And he read, whether there be knowledge, it shall pass away too. And I said, if tongues have ceased, how would you know? Mm. How would you know? Because knowledge would have passed away. Well, everybody laughed. He got embarrassed. There was a Japanese girl said, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I said, meet me after class. Now, I said all of that to let you know, those of you that may have had a bad experience, no excuse at all. Because Jesus loves you, and he commanded all his disciples together. In Acts chapter 1, he commanded them not to go anywhere out until they were clothed with power from high, on high and received the Holy Spirit. 
Doc, it's not a necessity for salvation, but it's an absolute necessity if we want to bring the message of salvation to everybody else so we can be powerful witnesses for the Lord. Over the last 41 years in ministry, Doc, for in 66 countries, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people yes. come to Jesus because of the demonstration of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, and miracles. No argument. This is why <laughs> you're privileged today to hear Dr. Augie David. And what happens is this, people. You have to understand that, that every country has a language. Every country I go to, they have an official language. Well, with the kingdom of God, with God's country, there's an official language. The official language is tongues. The official language wow. of the country of God is tongues. Wow. So, 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 so if we're, if we're going to move, and, and, and here it is, people are trying to move this, this actual doctrine out of the way. Well, I have a question for you. Where has your intellect gotten you? Has it gotten you healed? Has it gotten you set free? Has it gotten you? No, it hasn't. Because there's a language, and in Ephesians 3.20, it, it says, God, God says, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or imagine. What does that mean? That means there has to be a language that, oh, that, 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 that overtakes your comprehension and allows you to tap into the mind of God and bring the wisdom of God to the earth. Talk to me, Dr. David, about that. Absolutely right, Doc. You know, Col Colossians 2.3 says, In Christ are hidden. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You're in Christ, and Christ is in you, and because of him, in you, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 5 says that a counsel of wisdom in a man's heart is like deep waters, but a man of understanding uses a bucket, so to speak, uh, to draw that water out. And uh, uh, Proverbs 18, verse 4 says, the words of a man's mouth are like deep waters, and wisdom is like a flowing brook. So the words of a man's mouth connected to the waters there is the connection. The words of man's mouth is a bucket that dips into wisdom and pulls it out. And that's what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, words taught by, not by man, but by the Holy Spirit. And through the words taught by the Holy Spirit, you pull out the mind of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Augustine <laughs> David on the Golden Rule Show, <laughs> making a difference, producing life, because th this is what I'm telling you. If you're going to move ahead in the days to come, you're going to have to tap into something from heaven that's not, that's not an actual repeat. Last week, we had Dr. Mario Soto on the show, and that man said something so powerful. He said, there are people whose anointings have expired. Wow. And think about the expiration date on an anointing. And, and, and it, it's biblical because out of Hebrews 11.3, it says at specific times and dispensations, the people had a word from God that radically changed their generation. So here it is. Enoch had a word for his day. Enoch's word was let's walk away. Noah had a word for his day. Get on the, get on the boat. <clears throat> and all those that didn't get on the ark died. So that was the word of the Lord for that day. So what happens is the mystery of God allows us to make history so people, every generation, has a special revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit of God. And I believe everything within me, the old anointings have expired. Mm. Please listen Amen. to me, people. Amen. People are doing the like, same thing, trying to kickstart old anointings, but those anointings had an expiration date. When the person wow. died, the anointing expired. Wow. So God wants us to take those foundations higher. But you have to understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit has not left the earth. That's still real. That's, it's a language of heaven that taps into the mind of God right. that brings us mystery so we can rewrite history. Ladies and gentlemen, Augustine David is on this show. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. David, talk to me. I want to share with you a little bit about what praying in tongues actually accomplishes. In uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, it says, God makes everything perfect in his time, everything beautiful in his time. But the same verse says that inside of man's heart is, is a world on the inside of him, and he doesn't know what part of the world on the inside of him God is at work, and because of that, frustration results. And... Uh, uh, mm. You know, uh, so you may look like a very simple person, but there's a world on the inside of you, a world of the imaginations, a world of the memory, world of emotions, world of reasonings, and your personal world, how you relate to people at home, work, and other places, and so on. 
and you don't know what part of the world on the inside of you, there's also issues, strongholds, handles that the devil has, sometimes childhood molestation, childhood abuse, uh, just many things that happen in your life. You're pushed down into the realm of the subconscious. You don't know what part of the world on the inside of you, there's, there's sin, there's uh, deception, there's blindness, yeah. there's strongholds, access to the devil that the devil can just twist those handles yes. and cause trouble in, a, in, a, in an unexpected moment. But uh, Proverbs 20, verse 27, Doc, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, and it uh, searches every part of the being. And uh, mm. uh, it, it's like a candle of mm. the Lord. The, your spirit, human spirit, is a searcher. It's a scanner. It can go throughout the world that's on the inside of you. And when it's lit, the Holy Spirit uses the lit power of your human spirit, and it scans throughout the world on the inside of you. David said in Psalm 77, verse 6, 3, verse 6 says, when I'm overwhelmed, he said, I sit up in my bed, I meditate on the Lord, and my spirit, my spirit makes a diligent search. Your human spirit is a searcher, it's a scanner, and it goes throughout the world on the inside of you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, uh, sorry, chapter 12, uh, chapter 14, verse 12, he said, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. He didn't say the Holy Spirit. He says, my mm. spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Now, the Amplified Bible says, my spirit by the Holy Spirit prays. You see, your human spirit, if you're born again, is given birth to by the Holy Spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which yes. is born of the spirit is spirit. So for lack of a better term, your human spirit that's born again and the Holy Spirit, they're almost like two peas in a pod. And so you don't know where one stops and the other one starts. And uh, so he that is joined to the Lord, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So when Paul says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful, what he's saying, the Amplified, is my spirit by the Holy Spirit. In other words, when I pray in tongues, it's my spirit that is praying. But when the, uh, the words come from the source of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2, 4, mm -hmm. and they began to speak with other tongues, but the Holy Spirit was the one that gave the uh, utterance of the tongues. So the source is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dumps these words into your spirit, but you, as an act of your will, you begin to pray in other tongues. And that's now we can understand Romans 8, 26 to 28. It says, uh, when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit uh, helps us. And uh, he that searches the hearts, who is that? It's your human spirit. Your human spirit is a searcher. He that searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Holy Spirit mm. is, and he prays according to the will of God. And because of this, all things will work together for the good of those that are called uh, uh, according to God's purpose. That means he'll make all things beautiful in his time, praise God. So the more you pray in tongues, what happens is the Holy Spirit lights the candle of your human spirit and searches throughout the world on the inside of you. Because inside of the world on the inside of you, you don't know where Satan has access, what strongholds are there. But when, the may, when you begin to pray in other tongues, independent of your mind, the Holy Spirit picks up on all those things and through your spirit intercedes for you. And in the process, you get built up. Uh, the strongholds get uh, put to death yes. and pulled down. And in the process, your human spirit is being conditioned by the Holy Spirit to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, yes. sensitive to the gifts of the Spirit, visions, warnings, and directions of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says you'll be built up and built up, and you'll be highly charged up. And you don't know how things will work out, right. but it will give birth to the mind of oh. Christ. The more you pray in tongues, you're working yes. the plans and yes. purposes of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, <laughs> Dr. Augie David's here. Now watch this here. There's something else that happens when you pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, every one of you has like ceilings in your life. Yes. It's ceilings. And yes. what happens when you pray in tongues, you put to death the deeds of the flesh. Let me explain what that is. Sometimes as you're praying in tongues, you feel like, you feel like you're just losing it. It's like, my God, every emotional thing in you is on high alert, and you're going, God, because what, what's happening is this. Man, God, can't, God cannot heal your wounds. God cannot heal you. That sounds wrong. Watch this. Every, he's put everything within us that pertains to life and godliness. He's given me everything already. So I have to use the tool he's given me to deliver me. Amen. Amen. He's already delivered me. 
And so Peter said, I, I'm, I'm praying God, has, he can't change it because so what happens when you're praying in tongues, the impasse in you, you say, I'm done with this. He goes, now you gave me the faith I needed mm. to put the tool in you so you can deliver yourself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's just true. People, people are praying, God set me free. He goes, I can't. I gave you all power. I put the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I've given you wisdom to do this. So God doesn't heal you. You have to renew your mind. Yes. He doesn't renew your mind for you. That's you have to repent. That word pent means the top and re means retake the top. Mm. So God gives you the tools to retake the top and the ability because God's no magic wand. And so what happens, he's giving you the power, and when you pray in the Spirit, sometimes you hit an impasse. And this is where the average person backs out of prayer and starts to blame everybody else for everything wrong. No, at that point, stay in and keep praying in tongues, Amen. and you will overcome that. And all of a sudden, there will be seasons of peace. You're going, how did I get this peace? Because you put to death the deeds of the Amen. body. Amen. Wonderful, Doc. Go ahead, Doc. Wonderful. Also, uh, Jude verse 19 and 20, it says, there's a group of people that are ruled by their senses. They're sensual, and so they're ruled by their flesh, ruled by the senses. But in contrast to that, the next verse says, but you, beloved, uh, uh, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so the Amplified Bible of that says, you, beloved, make progress. Rise up higher and higher like a building, mm. like an edifice, like a big building, praying in the Holy Ghost. That means the more you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're rising above the rulership of the senses mm. or the flesh. And mm. you rise up mm. and you build yourself up, 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 uh, higher than the limitations of the flesh, the, uh, all the demonic realms and the ceilings, as Dr. Rivers was talking about. When you pray in tongues, uh, it's difficult at first, but it's like, you know, you're going through a, uh, on an airplane, you know, and it's bad weather. You look out the window, or you're just, you know, trying to go through all the clouds, and everything looks dark, dingy, rainy, and, and everything else. You think there's no progress that's being made. Yep. What you don't know, you're already in a climb position. What you don't know, you're already making a move up. And not far from, uh, not long after that, you break right out of all those dark clouds and into the blue sky and all of those things. That's what happens. But the devil convinces us to remain in our ceilings. Yes, yes. You don't feel like uh, nothing's happening when you pray yes. in tongues, you know. Uh, you should be doing other things, you know, all yep. kinds of distractions. But if you stay with stay, it, you stay. will get right through all all of those impasses, all of those limitations, and you break right out of all of those uh, ceilings. And, and this is the power of this, because you have no idea the vastness of your call. Guys, I grew up special education, rode a short bus to a special school. But when I got built and filled with the Holy Spirit, I began to pray in tongues, and the mind of God <laughs> brought me into alignment with eternity. Uh, guys, guys, I'm supposed to be a statistic. <laughs> and, now I'm, and now I'm making history in God, why? Because I do one thing, I pray in tongues. And trust me, I can hear the criticisms right now. Well, that doesn't, I got it, I got it. Well, let me tell you, I'm sorry, I'm convinced. I'm sorry, I'm walking on the water. I'm sorry, God has me going above and beyond where you can ask or imagine. So please take that negative debate somewhere else. Amen. <clears throat> because Amen. I'm sorry, I can't understand. Amen. The one thing I did is this. Shut up, blah, blah, blah. I would sit there and blah, blah, blah for hours, and my <laughs> mind felt like I'm doing nothing. And next time I become an ambassador for a country that's not, I don't even speak the language of the country I'm the ambassador for. I just won the, the top award from the White House in America, tongue-talking, special education, short bus <laughs> rider. And that guy, Sharaba Karaba Sanda, has taken me into a dimension above and beyond what I can ask or imagine. So now I'm not bound by my intellect anymore. Amen. I don't have to understand. I can sit there and have no understanding and go, Shira ba ba ba. And, and everyone says, what are you doing that for? Because I'm talking a language that only God understands. I'm talking a language that idiot proves me so I don't mess up my own prayer life. <laughs> so I can build my faith without my intellect. So for all you intellectual people watching, God bless you. Stay in that realm. I'm going to a realm that's above and beyond. I'm, I'm going to go there right now for a minute. <laughs> 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 But I went to a realm. I have no idea what I prayed, but I receive it right now while it's still a mystery so we can make history. Dr. David, go ahead. Also in 1 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 14, Paul says, He that prays in an unknown tongue, let him pray for the interpretation. Jesus said, when you 
whatever you desire, the moment of prayer, believe that you have received. As you were sharing those kinds of things, uh, Dr. Rivers, I just sensed from the Lord, as I began to pray in tongues, I just sensed from the Lord, the power of God is coming upon many of you right now, yes. and the Holy Spirit is filling you right now. The anointing is upon you, begin to open your mouth, and begin to pray in tongues, no matter what it sounds like. That's it. Release your tongues right now in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one, one minute left. Rebuilding Foundations of Faith from the original tongue talker, Dr. Augustine David. And this video, honey, I shrank the devil. <laughs> Come on, somebody. This is Dr. Augustine David. Google his name. You'll find his stuff. And you need to, honey, I shrunk the devil. And you need to rebuild the foundations of faith. I'm Dr. Rivers. This is the Golden Rule Show. God bless you all.